we now will, will try to link between why people in Egypt try to get rid of this. Not only because we don't have eat food. This guy is, you know, helping Israel to kill the Palestine, the elected government in Palestine. And he's, the guy is the right arm of Israel to achieve this. And people in Egypt is very, very, feeling very bad of this. And this could be 40% of the reason why we, we need to get rid of this guy, not only because we don't have money. Other thing is we can, we can survive with. Egyptians are patient. Egyptians are very patient people. If we can eat very little and we can sleep peacefully and we can drink very little, okay, we can leave him play in his palace, eat, enjoy his fresh juice, enjoy his, you know, his life. But this guy is hitting in every single feeling as Muslims, as Arab, as neighbors around us. Sudan is suffering from him. Palestine is suffering from him. Everywhere this guy is joining Israel and joining the world. He's hurting, he's, he's, he's acting against his people. And this is, I think, one of the most things we'll, we'll have to think about and to remember always that this revolution, not the Egyptian people only will benefit from this. All people around us, all neighbors, all world will learn from this and will benefit from this. And this is could be the last dictator in world to, to survive in the on earth in the future. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Abdul Kader. Whenever a revolution like this happens, people are not parochial. They don't just look in their own borders drawn by the Brits. They look beyond it. Abdul Kader showed that. Mohammed's a doctor, a Palestinian, excuse me, a Palestinian, and he wants to say a few words as well. It follows up brilliantly from what Abdul Kader said. The West is coming in to make sure that we now have democracy in Egypt. Tell that to a Palestinian. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Hello, thanks uh, for inviting me to speak. All right. Pretty much, I don't know what one Arab in Scotland could say that millions of people in Tunis and Egypt, in Yemen, in Sudan, in Jordan have already said through their actions, putting their livelihoods, their lives on the line every single day for the past months now, if not years, just surviving under these dictatorships, these leaderships, these regimes supported and funded by America and Israel. I think one way to sum things up is when a journalist asked Joe Biden, the American vice president at the moment, would you call Hosni Mubarak a dictator? And Joe Biden's response was, I would not call him a dictator because he's maintaining peace in the Middle East. So when Joe Biden and the Americans don't consider leaders like, uh, like uh, Zain al-Abidin of Tunis and Mubarak of Egypt and Abdullah of Jordan and Saleh of Yemen. They don't consider them dictators because they're maintaining peace. A peace which involves suppressing their people's rights, suppressing their freedoms, suppressing their dreams. A peace that involves shutting off Palestine from outside help, blocking the borders whether through Gaza or the West Bank on the Jordanian border, a peace which involves supporting the Israeli massacres of Gaza, the Israeli massacres against the people of Lebanon. This is the peace the Americans want, a peace that suits them, and their agents for this peace are the likes of Hosni Mubarak and King Abdullah and Mr. Saleh of Yemen. The people do not choose this peace. We saw the light being lit in Tunis and now it's flaming across Egypt and God willing it'll cross all across the Arab world. One Arab here in Scotland, I'm not risking my life, I'm not doing anything. All I can say is thank you for giving me a couple words. But I say look towards the words and the actions of the millions in Egypt, the millions in Tunis and all across the Arab world who've had enough and who are now telling Joe Biden, we don't want your puppet. Down with Hosni Mbarak, down with the rest of them. 
and hopefully the next Arab League summit is going to be a get-to-know-each-other summit as opposed to, hello old friend, I've been seeing your face for the past 30 years. Down with the regimes. <laughs> the Egyptians have the best slogans and the best placards. Wonderful. It really is time to think about, it's time to use the sort of babysitter test. You wouldn't employ a babysitter who had a record as a bloody paedophile. And Tony Blair is the Middle East peace envoy on our behalf. Dr. Abed Almeni is an Iraqi. It really is necessary to reflect upon what we have done to that country. The devastation, the lies, the crimes. Before Abbott speaks, I just before Abbott speaks, I just want to say one thing. Because sometimes he forgets about it. He's been an opponent of the occupation from the beginning. But before the massacres, during the sanctions, when the West killed half a million Iraqi children. Half a million Iraqi children died and Madeleine Albright was asked what she thought about it. She said it's a price worth paying. She said it's a price worth paying. Abid has family in Baghdad and had family in Baghdad. And he went along to Boots on Shandwick Place. I think that was the one. He went along to Boots on Shandwick Place while Tony Blair was on television saying medicines are not part of the sanctions regime. And Abbott got a, a box of medicines from Boots and sent it to his family in Baghdad. It was returned with a big sticker saying not allowed under the sanctions regime. Half a million children murdered and Blair still scuttles like a cockroach around the Middle East to bring peace. He's rubbing salt in the wounds of every Arab who wants to be free and who remembers the devastation of the people of Iraq. Abid Almeni from Iraq. Hi. Well, I'm, I'm glad I could talk without anybody throwing stones at me or shooting me. Mick just reminded me of the Iraqi invasion. The United Nations at the time, the United Nations at the time, did say that 5,000 Iraqi children die every month because of the sanction. The sanction went from 91 till, till the invasion. And he also just reminded me that on one occasion, I sent some medication to my sister's children, which I bought from Boots the chemist here. And within two weeks, it came back with a big label saying, unable to deliver it because of the sanction. I joined the million people the demonstration in London against the invasion of Iraq. But Tony Blair ignored all that, and he went away and, and went along and invaded Iraq. Two million people died in Iraq. A million during the sanctions and another million after the sanction. And people are still dying now, including some of my family died. Half of my family now are refugees or dead, thanks to Tony Blair. It is time for Egypt now. First of all, I would like to congratulate the people of Egypt for being so brave and starting this revolution. It is time for this revolution to, to spread to all Arab countries. I congratulate the people of Tunisia for freeing themselves and getting rid of the dictator who lasted 23 years. Mubarak been there 30 years. And Yemen is starting and Jordan is starting. I'm afraid it's a long way, but it's, it's a start. And with people like you supporting the people in the Middle East throughout all Arab countries and everywhere else, in fact, I'm sure one day we'll get there. Everybody will be free. And we don't need any invasions. We don't need any armies. We don't need any killing. We don't need to throw stones at people. All people of this earth want is to live in peace as a human beings.
But like I said, with support of the people like you, I'm sure one day we'll get there. Thank you. If you take nothing else away from here today, you take away two things, the heroism of the people of Egypt and by extension the whole Arab world yesterday and tomorrow. An Abd al statement made that half his family are dead or refugees because of Tony Blair. And the British government still defends the crime. This is unbearable. What the hell's wrong with the people we live with and work with? People don't suffer because they actively encourage crime. People don't suffer because they will, they will their governments to massacre and kill Afghans or Iraqis. They suffer because they didn't do enough to stop the crime. The people in Berlin in 1945, amid the ruins and the horror and the rape and more horror, they didn't want to kill Russians or Jews. They didn't do enough to stop it. And if a calamity was visited upon them, Blair and Brown and Cameron are taking us to hell in a, high, in a handcart. If we don't stop them, they will not just kill the other half of Abbott's family. They'll also take us into a perilous place that we don't want to go. Everybody who looks at Egypt says one thing. Egyptians are no longer afraid. They've broken through the fear barrier. They begin to trust each other. They don't need to think. Five Arabs, one Mukhabarat, one secret police. Now they trust each other to an unprecedented degree. They can see the magnificence, the courage, the heroism, the humanity of millions of their fellow citizens. And what do we see? Big Brother crap on television. What do we see? We see people afraid. Afraid of the secret police? No! Afraid to lose their jobs. Afraid to speak up for asylum seekers. Afraid to be ridiculed. Afraid to stand out from the crowd. Afraid to talk about a better world and a revolution. Christ, is this the best we can expect? Something must be better than this. But even if you don't believe that, we have to stop the crime. There are serial heroin addicts and there are governments that serially invade other countries. And our government, and I'm going to avoid any hyperbole, our government is a criminal government, a government of crime. Abbott's lost half his family. If that's not a crime, then I'll stop trying to teach the English language. It is a crime, and we have not done enough. I don't mean we here. The people of Britain have failed so far to stop the crime. That's our starting point so that we can stop the next invasion of the next group of people sitting on some resources that America and Britain want, and they don't care who they remove to get there. The Arabs here are teaching us a lesson. They're teaching the world a lesson. Countries that were afraid, that were debased with corrupt governments, dirty dictators, disgusting, wrinkled faces of Mubarak and people like him, the people are now risen. They face massive challenges, but they also face our governments. Tony Blair has said that Mubarak is a force for good. What planet? What's the weather like on that planet? But let's end on a positive note before any other Arab comrades want to come in and say because we want to listen to them today. I worked in Saudi Arabia. I've been to hell and back. The government of Saudi Arabia said of the events in Cairo, this is caused by infiltrators. Eight million infiltrators. If this is caused by infiltrators, after they finish with Cairo, can they please come to Edinburgh? We'll meet them at the airport, because they've done one hell of a job there. We're waiting for the Libyans to show up. 
but I think it's now open mic for anybody that can, can for anybody who can speak Arabic. Would anybody like to address the crowd here before we wind up? Okay, friends, please, there's leaflets here to be given out. Please give them out to be people passing by. There's a letter over here to Alex Salmond to ask the Scottish First Minister to demand that Mubarak head for the airport, head for Saudi, or head for hell. But get the hell out of Cairo. So please sign the letter and we'll deliver it to Alex Salmond today. An international day of solidarity the people who are fighting against the dictators in the Middle East in North Africa have asked that we do so so that's what we've done today well done for coming along please don't go away yet as Mick said we have leaflets here letting people know a wee bit about what's going on because clearly the BBC isn't doing a, a very good job it's doing its standard job on the leaflets as well there's there's an advert for the demonstration that's taking place tomorrow. So please come and grab some leaflets and hand them out to the people that are going by.